All right, we're going to go out to Bucky Brooks' crib. He's going to join us to help us talk more about Christian McCaffrey. And we have a very interesting question here. Who's more valuable to their team, Christian McCaffrey or Derrick Henry in Tennessee? All right, let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, Derrick Henry rushed for more yards, 1,540 yards to McCaffrey's 1,387. Uh, McCaffrey outdistances him in receiving yards by a mile. They both have the same number of TDs. <clears throat> McCaffrey more touches. Obviously, the Tennessee Titans made the playoffs. The Carolina Panthers did virtually nothing. They lost Cam Newton early in the year. I, this is a really difficult question for me, so I'm going to pass the ball to you all first. Marcellus, who's more valuable, Christian McCaffrey or Derrick Henry? It's Derrick Henry. Um, now, the question is, who's more valuable? Not who's better. And because the question is, who's more valuable? It's the guy who had the individual success was the engine of their team, and that translated into their team success. And that's how I use the, the, the materials to say that it's Derrick Henry. Now, I looked at our little breakdown of the numbers, and we didn't talk about team success so much in that. And obviously, a team that goes to the AFC Championship game on the back of Derrick Henry has an advantage over Christian McCaffrey in their five wins. Uh, I think Christian McCaffrey certainly did all he could, and he was amazing last year. But Derrick Henry took it to another level, whereas we didn't even have to fully respect what we were getting out of their passing game in Ryan Tannehill, and you still weren't able to slow down Derrick Henry. So this is just an example of, you take both of these guys' resumes into the pawn shop last year, and Chris McCaffrey's going to get you a lot back, but Derrick Henry got you much more back in terms of what the team was looking for. So is Derrick. Oh, come on, Marcellus. No, no, no. Like, the reason it was so easy for Christian McCaffrey to get $16 million is because he's in the company of legends. He's a gold jacket guy when you look at it. More scrimmage yards than Barry Sanders. More rushing yards than Marcus Allen in his first three years. More receiving yards than Marvin Harrison, and more receptions than DeAndre Hopkins. The reason they were so quick to give out that money is because they can envision him standing on the steps of Canton and receiving a gold jacket for what he has accomplished. Look, the guy just went to 1,000, 1,000 club last year rushing and receiving yards. The reason he's got his money is because he's a dominant player in the league, and the Carolina Panthers certainly saw the value in paying a guy that is more than just a prototypical running back. L listen, Bucky, I think you make a great argument. I, I, I can't even disagree with it. I, I, I really, and I hate to play the fence here, but I have to a little bit. It just depends on your style of offense and your team and who your quarterback is, who your head coach is. Derrick Henry's playing for uh, 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 Mike Vrabel, a defensive coach, a defensive-minded guy. Now Christian McCaffrey playing for Matt Rule? Because look what he did with Ron Rivera and Norv Turner, an offense that was really trying to fix and trying to get the most out of Cam Newton. Now with Matt Rule, and this is why earlier in the show I compared this kind of like Dick Vermeil and Marshall Falk, Dick Vermeil and Priest Holmes. Now mm -hmm. when you have an offensive-minded head coach and you have a very versatile running back who can do all the Marshall Falk-like things, I, I, I think Christian McCaffrey will be just as valuable as Derrick Henry. I can't just go to the one-loss record because I attribute their one-loss record to the injuries to Cam Newton and a defense that I, I don't think was as good as it, as it needed to be. I can't put any of that on Christian McCaffrey. I think there's some equality here in the value of both. If I had to flip a coin, who's going to have a better 2020 season? I would probably lean toward Christian McCaffrey. But I, I think there's equal value here. I, you know, I, I'm playing the fence, and I hate to do that. But, but that's what I'm going to do, Marcel. So I'm going to play the fence. They're equal value, but <laughs> McCaffrey's going to have a better 2020, in my opinion. Man, you're going to rip your jeans being on that fence like that. Let me tell you this. <laughs> if you look at... If you look at what value is, is price and worth. And, and look, we're not going to even have a conversation about are they both worth a lot to their team. Yes, 
One has a higher price tag than the other. Not going to go down that lane, but if you get Derrick Henry at a cheaper cost than Prince McCaffrey, all of a sudden his value goes up because his price went down. On top of all that, I'm not so certain that you're going to get more out of Christian McCaffrey in terms of the numbers. Because you got to remember, everyone knows what's coming from both of these guys. But at least when you saw it with Derrick Henry, no one was able to stop it. This coming year with Christian McCaffrey is going to be the test to see if they can stop it. Thank God Teddy Bridgewater's in the building to take some of the pressure off of him. But Derrick Henry did it last year in, in the transition of quarterbacks and when he really didn't have great quarterback play. There was a time when Kyle Allen was playing adequate for Chris McCaffrey and they looked like they could make some noise. That quickly went south. So it's a lot more to prove what Chris McCaffrey would do in 2020 versus what Derrick Henry was doing, including the playoffs when we saw him coming and still couldn't stop him. Oh, look, he's an unstoppable force. Uh, arguably one of the best running backs in the National Football League in terms of just being a, a, a blunt force trauma type producer. However, I'm going to hit Marcellus where it hurts. Marcellus, when you were with the Chargers and you saw LaDainian Thomason each and every week and LaDainian impacted the game, not only as a runner, but as a receiver, from a defensive standpoint, it is hard to slow down someone like that. And when Jason Whitlock brings up Priest Holmes and Marshall Falk, that's the category that you have to put Christian McCaffrey. Really, he's not a running back. He's a playmaker. He's an offensive weapon. He's so good catching the ball out the backfield that you have to use nickelbacks on him, but he can run the ball against loaded boxes. Look, there are a handful of running backs in this league that are these hybrid players that people are falling in love with. Christian McCaffrey got paid. The next ones that we'll see get paid will be Alvin Kamara, Saquon Barkley. Right now, when you're a running back, you have to be able to do more. Christian McCaffrey just opened up the floodgates for running backs to start getting paid like they should be. Bucky's starting to win me over, Marcellus. I got to keep it real. When I just Man, think stop, about stop. where the NFL <laughs> is, think about where the NFL is, though. Because what I think Derrick Henry is is an updated version of Jerome Bettis. Jerome Bettis, Marshall Falk played at the same time. Marshall Falk was an MVP of the league uh, at that time because of his versatility, catching the ball out of the backfield, running. Now, Put Marshall Falk in this modern era, and, and it's great what Derrick Henry has done, but I think it's probably more sustainable what, Mar what uh, Christian McCaffrey brings to the table in this modern NFL. Both of these guys, Teddy Bridgewater, Ryan Tannehill, might be the same type people. What would, what would be a better asset for Bridgewater or Ryan Tannehill a guy that can catch the ball out of backfield and make that kind of magic? Or is it a, a, a tank like Derrick Henry? I just think in this modern NFL, Marcellus, what McCaffrey brings to the table is more sustainable. That's where the league is headed and is at right now. Look, look, the league headed there. The league already been there. The league did that before. I played with LT, and I'm glad you brought him up. And you know, in, our, in his first four years, how many winning seasons? One. When we Our first year with LT, we won five games. <laughs> we all, I saw him win four games. Like, I love this conversation because I'm not slighting either one of these guys, but one of them translates a little differently. One's a king of one and one's a jack of all trades. And Derrick Henry coming downhill, the physics of that <laughs> has not been stopped yet. We saw one game last year where we were stopped, and it was the AFC Championship game where – he didn't necessarily have all the surrounding pieces supporting him. But I love Chris McCaffrey. He's going to ball out. But all that, you got him here, you got him there. Is that going to create the chain movement? Is that going to create the, the tempo changes you need? Is that going to dictate the time of possession you need? I've just seen it before, and I've seen it not work, and I've seen it work. But he's going to ball. But is the team going to reap those benefits? That's yet to be seen. Well, see, now, here, here's the thing, and this is going to go up, up against probably about a year of arguments that I've had on the show at quarterback talking about Cam Newton. Well, let's be honest right now. Christian McCaffrey is now going to play with a quick rhythm passer and Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater is going to afford Christian McCaffrey more opportunities to be more impactful in the passing game. Well, Cam Newton may have enabled Christian McCaffrey to get big yards as a runner, 
Teddy Bridgewater is going to allow us to see what Christian McCaffrey can fully do in the passing game, screen game, option routes, all of the other stuff that really exploits the mismatches that he can create on the perimeter against defenses and defenders that don't have the athleticism to deal with him. Teddy Bridgewater is going to help Christian McCaffrey play at an MVP level. And we will look back at this contract and we will begin to view running backs the way that we always should have very valuable parts of an offensive puzzle. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak for Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.